Are you a little frustrated with your painters right now? <laughs> Do you ever say to yourself, why don't they just listen? Why can't they follow instructions? Why am I lurching from dumpster fire to dumpster fire at various projects that are running over budget, that have callbacks, uh, people are confused, uh, things are getting painted that shouldn't be painted, things that should be painted aren't being painted. I'm getting calls about folks uh, goofing off on their cell phone, making messes out in the yard, uh, smoking a doobie out in the woods, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the many and sundry uh, complaints, issues, and lamentations you deal with daily as it relates to your painters. And you ask yourself, why won't they just listen to me? Do I have to do everything myself? And the answer is, no, you don't. And yes, things can get better, but there are a few steps that you have to take in order to to make that transformation and I've helped hundreds make that transformation and I'm going to give you some advice that you can immediately leverage to do this in your own painting business. Now before we get into the content here, a uh, few announcements. If you have not checked out the Painting Profit Summit yet, which is uh, the premier gathering of the world's wealthiest painters, please do go to paintersacademy.com slash summit or just go to Painting Profits Summit. Dot com. That's PaintingProfitSummit.com. This is going to be a fantastic event uh, where you'll be surrounded by peers that are knowledgeable. There will be great course content and even opportunities for you to walk away with done-for-you business systems, PaintingProfitSummit.com. And uh, there's a new podcast out. Believe it or not, uh, I have finally done this. I dragged my feet on it uh, where I have taken all of my video content uh, for years now. And I have placed it on all the podcast platforms. If you will simply search in your podcast platform, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts for Painters Academy. Painters Academy, you will find us. Uh, hit that subscribe button and you will be able to listen to this. I'm far more of a listener than a watcher. Uh, and if you are in that minority, which I am with me, uh, then you will love the podcast more than you love the videos because I just like to listen to things and piddle around the house. I'm not much of a TV watcher or a YouTube watcher, but I do love my podcast. And then finally, do hit the subscribe button below this video and uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you feel like you're getting something out of this, share it on social media with other painters that you feel are struggling with the same problem. So everyone is going to be disappointed from time to time with their employees. This cannot be avoided. We are uh, in the human business, right? We buy labor hours wholesale. We sell them retail for a living. Uh, we buy paint wholesale. We sell it retail for a living. That's really what we do. We don't paint. And the managing of those painters can be very stressful, very aggravating, very confusing, okay? And um, even if you do everything perfectly, you're not going to live in a Garden of Eden, but it can be a heck of a lot better. It does not have to be a five-alarm fire every single day. You do not have to uh, sell with a lack of confidence because you really know that the product and service you're delivering isn't guaranteed to go off without a hitch. Uh, but there are things that you can do to help. Now, surefire uh, ways to tell. Uh, if the problem is is maybe you uh, and the way that you're running your business and not necessarily the people that you hired uh, are these. Uh, if you're running through painters like crap through a goose. I talked to a guy the other day, and he says, I think I've gone through 100 painters this year, and he's got like three painters now. I'm like, boy. I mean, they, the average tenure had to be like a week or whatever it is. It can't be much. Uh, and, you know, when I started talking to him, I, I could, I could kind of understand why. Um, and, and also if every day it is a catastrophe, then that, that's a surefire sign that something is wrong with the management systems or methodologies in your painting business. So here are a few, uh, items that, that will make your painters not listen to you, uh, and that will cause poor performance and you can fix these pretty quickly. The first mistake, uh, that often causes the painters not to listen to you is this. Have you told them what they do? for a living. If I ask your painter uh, what they do for a living at your company, and if they say, I paint stuff, 
you have failed. <laughs> you have failed in your core mission, and that is to communicate to people what their job is. And your painters really have uh, four key jobs, in my opinion. I like to keep things simple. I think we overcomplicate this business very often. Number one, uh, their, their job is to bring projects in on budget. Bring projects in on budget. Uh, if they don't know that, and we're going to get into a little bit of, of more of why they may not know that. If they don't know that, then there is a problem. Uh, they need to make clients happy. Okay, now both of these things are, are, are measurable. One by customer satisfaction surveys, the other one by job costing. Uh, third, they are to follow company policies and procedures. Clock in here. Fill out this paperwork. Um, don't smoke on the job. Uh, whatever, whatever your rules are, and they, there don't need to be a whole lot of them. Uh, if you give uh, your painters a bazillion rules, uh, that is another good way to make sure they don't follow them. But, but there needs to be like a Ten Commandments, uh, a handful of processes and procedures in your company, and everybody knows what they are, and so it's easy to adhere to those. And then finally, you need to ask them not to lie, cheat, or steal. And that pretty much covers everything else. And so um, the first thing is you got to let them know what they're there to do. If you don't tell them what they're there to do, then uh, their goals... Uh, will not align with the company goals, and if their goals is uh, goals rather are just to get a paycheck, okay, with the least amount of effort, maybe it's because you haven't told them what their job is and you haven't made it clear what they're to do. Another thing is, uh, if you do not give them any measurable uh, goals or measurable feedback, okay, that's number two. First one is uh, we've not told them what they do for a living. The second one is not giving them any measurable goals or feedback. If you're not giving your crews labor hour goals, by the labor hour, not the day, 96 hours, 116 hours, whatever it happens to be, if you don't give them that goal and then give them feedback on whether or not they reached it, if you have not told them that uh, on the Likert scale of the 10 things that you measure when you give them a customer satisfaction survey that you expect to have a 9 or higher, how can they possibly help you reach a goal you have not told them about? This is solid gold. You need to write this down and go back and do it. Um, number three, no recognition, reward, or appreciation for outstanding performance. If everyone in your company is paid X dollars an hour, irregardless of how productive they are, how much they contribute, how easy they are to work, uh, um, or rather how, easier they are, how easy they are to work with, if they just get paid the same amount of money, no matter what, uh, and if you don't ever thank them, if you don't ever write them a note, if they're not uh, recognized with something like a Save Labor bonus program, if you are not uh, bragging on them in company meetings, if you're not having contests of some description uh, or rewarding folks when they reach benchmarks of achievement, you're not going to see a lot of good behavior. Uh, things that are incentivized increase. Things that are punished or taxed decrease. And so if all you ever do is dole out uh, a sermon when things don't go well, but there's nothing on the other side of the equation, then you're going to be in trouble. And occasionally I've, I've found myself doing that. Uh, it is my default setting uh, as an individual. I, I Bad habits I picked up from being raised the way I was raised the first 13 years. And uh, I do that. Okay, So if you do something like that, you have to have the self-awareness to understand this is not working. Another one is no tools or training to succeed. If all you do is drop your painters off at a job and bark some verbal instructions, that is a, uh, that is a recipe for disaster. You uh, have failed your painters. Uh, the longest uh, memory is not as good as the shortest pen. Write that stuff down. Uh, and uh, further, if all they get is a scope of work, that's not quite enough either. They need to have tools and documents with them. Uh, that allow them to follow a process uh, that reduces callbacks, that lets them know how they need to begin and end a job every day, how they need to launch a job and close it out, uh, what equipment they need, dual column checklists for reducing callbacks, payment envelopes, change orders, problem solving worksheets, labor hour tracking, meet the crew leader sheet, etc. If you're not giving them any tools, if you're just sending them out with verbal instructions or just a naked scope of work, it, you're falling short. Now, scope of work is a, he a heck of a lot better than verbal instructions, but there's a lot you can do uh, that will really help them. Uh, another thing that that may cause you continual disappointment, and I'll close with this one, is that you have hired crap painters because you're cheap. You have hired crap painters because you're cheap. Now, 
sometimes people are genuinely cheap and miserly, and they pay, like if you looked around your market, you're paying in the bottom 20%, well, then you're going to get the bottom 20% of painters. And the reason, uh, other than people being miserly and cheap, which I don't think is the chief cause uh, of people uh, paying people poorly, uh, is that their operations systems are so a who. They don't do job costing. They don't have production rates. They don't set goals. And they don't manage their painters well that the only way they think that they can make money is to just barely pay anybody anything. Okay, and also if your sales and marketing system is so broke that you don't have a good strong relationship with your past clients and um, and referral sources, if you're not in constant communication with them, so that you're just really you know running your business on the first transaction instead of the second transaction and the first referral, if you're not sending out newsletters uh, by mail and email every month to stay in touch with your clients, if you don't reactivate them, you've got very weak relationships. Most of your leads come from online. Uh, and, and, and you're not focused on repeat and referral uh, work and commercial repaints and going after B2B referral sources, then what happens is, and if you've got a crappy sales process on top of all that, meaning it, you have an email it in, pet the dog uh, sales system, well, all that means that, that, that you're going to have to sell on price, and you can't be the cheapest. Nobody can. And all those reasons uh, make you pay a painter 20 bucks an hour when everybody else in town is paying them 25 to 30 and so you end up left with whatever you get and typically uh, the most talented people work for the highest pay and so I always tell our members if you can't be the cheapest and you can't be the most expensive be the most expensive but that requires good sales marketing and operation systems so to recap if your painters don't listen to you okay I'm, let me add one other thing I didn't put on this list and this is a big one, and if, if you've tuned out, tune back in. If you don't like your painters, don't respect your painters, don't care about your painters, uh, continually and constantly have almost nothing but bad things to say about your painters, they know it. Often I will talk to an owner, and I can tell in four or five minutes of talking to them, they don't like their employees at all. They've made that abundantly clear repeatedly in a short period of time with me, a stranger. Imagine working with that day in and day out. Attitudes are contagious. Uh, uh, emotions uh, are, are some of the strongest uh, things that you can use to sell. And if your emotion is negative and condescending, your painters will pick, out on, uh, pick up on that, and what you'll be left with are disgruntled painters that primarily work for low pay, and those folks don't perform well. Okay, so to recap, Number one, love your painters. And if you don't love them, fake it till you make it. It's easier to act your way into doing better than to do your way into acting better. Or to, excuse me. It's easier to act your way into thinking better than to think your way into acting better. Go through the motions. Say nice things. Give out awards. Give out bonuses. And after a while, you'll find that you go from being terrible at it to being decent at it to being above average at it to being good at it. But it takes practice. So love your painters. Um, tell them what they do for a living and make it simple and easy for them to memorize and repeat. Uh, do give them measurable feedback and goals. Uh, recognize them, reward them, appreciate them. Provide them with tools so that they can succeed. Uh, make sure that you have paid them well. Okay, If you pay people well, if you have good sales, marketing, and operation systems, you can afford, instead of charging 50 bucks an hour, to charge 65 or 70 bucks an hour, and therefore you can pay your people uh, a higher rate, okay? A lot of what you can pay people determines on what you can sell the hour of labor for, and if all the systems that allow you to sell that at a premium are broken, it really paints you into a corner, excuse the pun, okay? All right, guys, don't forget about the Painting Profit Summit that's coming up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the last weekend in January. We do have a pre-day uh, or a pre-day, a pre-agenda sales event going on uh, between now and November 30th, and you can attend live or virtually. And if you don't have that code, uh, email me, brandon at paintersacademy.com. I'll send that code to you so that you can get the discount. Uh, further, if you need help, Brandon, I watched these daggum videos of yours, and I've watched a 1,000 hours of them. I, I hear that all the time with people I get on the phone with. And you've been watching them for three years, but not much has changed. You got the same problems. You got the same income. You're in Strugglesville, but you're too proud 
to reach out for help, pray to God for wisdom and ability to follow through. If that's been put on your heart, it does not uh, hurt you to look for help. Uh, the call is free. There is no obligation, uh, and I just try to help you. And if you're a good fit, that's great. And if not, at least you'll walk away with some value uh, knowing more about your painting business likely than you've ever known before. Brandon at paintersacademy.com. And also, finally, if you have not, if you have not uh, been to paintersacademy.com, uh, and downloaded the five keys report. If you're one of those nervous Nelly types, distrustful of all people uh, online, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> but you want to find out about what we do, but you want to be anonymous uh, and do it at a distance and do it for free. Uh, I have set up a special opportunity for you, and that is at paintersacademy.com. You can download the five keys for finding success in an uncertain economy, and boy, are we in one now. And so feel free to go there, download that report, and I promise it will help you. Brandon Lewis here with the Academy for Professional Painting Contractors. Make those painters listen to you by doing the things uh, that earn you the respect uh, that you deserve. And that is what makes the ears open up. I hope this has been helpful. If I can ever help you, I'm standing by. I'm just an email away. Take care.